All right, what's up, everybody? Hope you're all having a great day, week, weekend, whenever it is that I put this video out. So, looking at some more land. You know, every once in a while, I take you all along on one of these little adventures. So, this is almost 100 acres. And, you know, I got some questions asked for it. So, I thought I'd go into a little more detail whether you're somebody that wants to do this or just have more interest in it. So usually the deal is if you're gonna make money on real estate, this goes for housing too. If it's been on the market a week, it's probably not something you can make money on. That's a pretty bold statement and some other people might make comments and tell me differently. But overall, it doesn't mean it's not a great property. It might be great for you to buy and build your dream house on or something like that. That's not what I'm saying. If you are wanting to invest in property, so you're wanting to buy property and some way, shape or form, you're gonna do something to it and resell and make money. Whether, like I said, whether it's a house or land or whatever, if it's on MLS and on the market and been on, you know, a week, then it's not, great potential might still be okay potential but it's probably not great because that means that you know there's usually a group and i've started to figure out who they are like in my area there's usually a group of people in the area that are always speculating on real estate and looking to buy it so they jump on things just like i have so last night through my little way that i get information on properties that are going to hit the market but it's not on MOS yet. I saw this come across and I jumped on it. And that's the thing, even people with money, like I usually put together investors, I usually don't take something down by myself, but something that I've learned over the years is even people that have a lot of money, like real, real money, don't tend to jump on things. So if you wanna make money in this game and be the first one in on it, then sometimes you just got to put up money and sometimes you lose it sometimes it works out like your due diligence money so um, that deal with the little house that you guys have seen um, I was walking away from that deal because I w went into it planning on being able to put two houses on it and it turned out we couldn't put two houses on it so I was walking away from the deal but the seller uh, came back and hit my counter and we were able to make it work sometimes that doesn't happen i would have lost my due diligence money I mean, that's just so that's the risk you take up front usually they're in the area so i want to at least go look at them with what i'm doing out here sometimes you don't get a chance to look at them you got to have an offer at least in so on the way over here we put an offer in doesn't mean be accepted but you know we put an offer in and uh we'll see what happens so by the time you're seeing this i'll know if uh got it or not and i'll either update in the comments or i'll add it to this video or it'll be in the next video all right so a few things about the property it's almost 100 acres it's in johnston county so there's some uh you know different counties around me where i'm at and asking price is 1.1 million for 98 acres and pretty much what i've seen in the market is most people want to get about 1.5 1.6 now for less acreage so right away i know there's probably a little something with it right so i drive out here and there's a lot of mobile homes leading up to it and i don't have anything against mobile homes i've lived in a couple i even owned, owned a double wide and lived in it too when the boys were really little when we first started out so don't take that as a slide at all but with real estate, it does affect your property values and what you can get and all that kind of stuff. So past that, came on in. And then once you pass the property, uh, there's a few more double wides. They're on brick foundations. And then you get to a subdivision that uh, my realtor's checking in on. But I believe it's probably three to four years old. And it looks like they put 20 houses on 20 acres. So we're going to see what those houses sell for. They're probably 300-ish is my guess, uh, which in our market is the lower end. 
but they're nice. There's probably 80 acres of developable land, de land that can be developed here. We'll see, we'll see what happens. Now, other side to it is, you know, you have to look at multiple things that you could do income with. So one thing about this is, it's planted in pine trees for harvesting. And some of them like these are about nine years old. And then you've got some that are 30 some years old that are probably past time to harvest. And then you've got some hardwoods. So you could buy this speculating, hey, the market's gonna keep going up, right? Or even if it flattens for a little while and even if it dips, comes back, whatever. So you gotta decide what kind of investor you are. Usually I wanna get in, do something, bigger tracks, move on. But if you wanted to come out here and say, well, it has, you know, the taxes are gonna be really low because it's in forestry, which means that you're growing the trees to sell and replant. So taxes are gonna be low and you could turn around and you could harvest this. So you could go ahead and harvest some of it, get some money back, um, but then you could turn around and harvest the rest of it in six years and why is that thing going off constantly? I gotta figure out what's wrong with my camera. Something's up. Seeing a lot of motion. Um, you know, so you're looking about six, six years minimum, but really they want 25. So, you know, you're talking about a 15 year investment if you wanna buy this just for timber. 15 years though, prices, I mean, prices have doubled or more. So in some places quadrupled just in three years. Okay, so like a double or triple easy. So, of course, inflation going up too. So, you know, it doesn't matter. But, so lots of options and that's what you got to weigh out. You got to be like, and that depends on who I call to see if they want to invest with me on this. Uh, some people want to put money somewhere for a while. You know, maybe they've sold some other property. Like I've got a guy that sold some property. He's going to owe $700,000 in taxes unless he puts it into another property right so you might come up and say well this is worth me buying instead of spending 700 on taxes my tax bill changed to 300 so i mean 400 out of the 1.1 so i'm really giving 700 for it that's how people that's how people make money keep money build wealth that's what they look at it's things like that but yeah so i may drive back in there some more i don't know quincy was supposed to be coming out here and look at it with me I'm going to see how far out he is. If I do drive some more, I'll show you some more. Uh, but yeah, if you're interested in this kind of thing, hit up in the comments what kind of other questions I should answer, uh, what kind of things you want to know. Well, a few things just popped in my head. So I don't see any survey stakes. So you have surveying to do. Property like this is probably 12 to 15 grand to survey, just the outer boundary. Uh, it depends on the surveyor. And then... Of course, there's a lot of money when you get into dividing up lots and soil testing and all that kind of stuff. So, so that's one thing I look for. I'm like, huh, there's no actual boundaries here yet. You know, when's the last survey done? That kind of thing. You know, does anyone lease the property? In this case, probably not. We still want to ask, like the other property we had, the 90 acre property, there was no lease. So, but we looked at that another property, um, that 110 acres we looked at together. That had a farm lease on it that wasn't going to be up, you know, for a little while. So you got to take those things into account. I've looked at property that had mobile homes on it, but they could be moved before closing. But then you're kicking people out of their homes. And I mean, I just didn't want anything to do with that, you know, so it can get messy. So lots of different options and questions. But the key to this, what I said in the beginning, you got to move fast. So you got to risk some money if you want to make real money. I'd rather do smaller projects than this and just do them on my own sometimes or maybe with one, have one person come in, but that's not where the money's at. So we'll see. But it's not all about money. It's about enjoying it too. And this is, this is interesting to me because I like the aspect of keeping some of it for maybe developing half of it, keeping the other half in pine trees and uh, keeping it longer term. So it's, it has some real attraction. So we'll see, see what happens. I'll update you soon. Uh, every big property is gonna have at least one dump site, minimum. And so you got to handle that and deal with that too, so. Uh, like I said, 
it's okay. It's uh, just depends on what somebody's looking for. That's why we got to see what this subdivision up here kind of priced out at and uh, go from there. I can